and to speak to you. We're still celebrating our uh, RBTs uh, and the fourth time of uh, reading through the Bible. In fact, we got together, been talking about Revelation uh, all week. It's just wonderful to hear God speak to us and uh, to celebrate. And we're thankful for all the people uh, that have sent in vlogs to help. There's a couple of sent in more than one, which is great. You'll hear a whole series uh, next week. But I, I just want to say that we've got John Tyndale today. And John is such a wise man and uh, such a great friend. Uh, and it's just such a blessing. He's one of those people I could listen to him uh, speak uh, as long as he wants about any subject. So please continue to be blessed as John shows us things from Luke's Gospel. Hello, thank you for having me. Over the last few years I've fallen in love a bit with Luke's Gospel and uh, I spent some time in it. Um, I'd like to share an overview this morning of one section of that lovely Gospel. It's chapter 10. But we go back to chapter 9 where the Lord Jesus Christ meets um, with Moses and Elijah on a mountain and he's transfigured. And there he discusses with them and they discuss with him his exodus, which he is about to accomplish in Jerusalem. That's a description of the cross and all that he accomplished. And uh, soon afterwards he sets out on a journey to Jerusalem. And uh, it's the longest journey. It goes right through to the end of the gospel. Um, and along the way there are these little journey markers that you find in Luke's gospel. There's one in the chapter 9, verse 57. As they were travelling along the road, someone said to him, you find those little journey markers here and there on this journey. And as he's travelling, the Lord Jesus Christ is engaging in a discipleship course with his disciples, um, explaining to them how his kingdom will come. He's going to be enthroned, as it were, through the death and resurrection and ascension. But this is how his kingdom is established in the earth. And it's done in chapter 10. This is um, three sections. The first one is the sending out of the 72 or the 70. And they are to go uh, before the Lord Jesus Christ to all the villages and towns and to, and to declare that the king is coming. The kingdom is, is at hand. That's, what, that's why the, the way the kingdom is established. Um, these 72 or 70 are a reflection of Genesis chapter 10, I think it is, where there are 70 nations of the earth described. Um, and uh, so this is, in a, in a sense, is the, the Lord saying this is the, a microcosm of the, the worldwide um, international venture of the kingdom. And the church's business is to declare in every place that Jesus is king and he's coming. He can come to your heart, he can come to your life. One day he will come in fullness. And uh, the, the, so in one sense, that's what, what that's saying, is that the kingdom comes through busy witnesses. The second story is, the one, of the, is one of the um, most famous stories. It's the parable of the Good Samaritan. Uh, a man is on his way from Jerusalem, the city of blessing, to Jericho, the cursed city set upon by robbers, left for dead, bleeding in the road. Along comes religion in the form of um, a priest and a Levite, but they don't do anything. Religion on its own can never save anybody. And he's left in the same condition as they arrive as he was before. They pass on, but along comes an outsider, a Samaritan, a despised outsider. And he em employs Everything that he's got, his, his donkey, his time, his energies, his oil, his bandages, his money, in order to rescue the perishing. And at the end, this man is left with a future. Uh, uh, he, he's healed, he's left with a future because of the sacrificial generosity of this Samaritan. And this is Jesus because he is the outsider, the ultimate outsider, crucified outside the city wall. Uh, in, Jer in John's Gospel, his, his opponents call him a Samaritan. And uh, that's what he is. That's what he came to do. And he deployed everything in his, uh, in his repertoire, as it were, his time, his energies, his very life itself, to die on the cross. 
in order to rescue lost people. So the kingdom comes through busy witnesses and the kingdom comes through generous carers. And, uh, and that's what we are to be. We are to be busy in the Lord's work and we are to be generous in the giving of ourselves for that work and for his service. But the third story is the famous story of Martha and Mary. You'd think that uh, Martha would be commended for her busyness, uh, for the king's uh, um, provision. She's busy in the kitchen and dining room looking after these men who've arrived in her house. But uh, it's actually Mary who's commended. She is sitting at the Lord's feet, listening to his word. And uh, the Lord says, this is the most important thing. This is the thing that will never be taken from you. Um, and it's, it means that uh, the kingdom comes through Jesus' seekers. I think this is important because um, we can be very busy in, in the kingdom, in our church. We can be very committed to reading our Bible um, through RBT. We can be investing ourselves generously in, um, in the Lord's work, sacrificially even. But it must never be at the expense of sitting at the Lord's feet, um, gazing upon his person, uh, discovering him in the pages of Scripture, um, and praying over and loving and obeying what we've seen of the Saviour in the Word of God. So I think that's um, what I'd like to say. It's a brief overview. The kingdom comes through busy witnesses. The kingdom comes through generous carers. And the kingdom comes through Jesus' seekers.